third one is called trapezoids. Now we know the definition of a trapezoid is exactly one pair of parallel sides. So I'm going to begin by constructing a side, and I'm going to give it a transversal. I'm now going to copy this angle up to here somewhere. If I produce two corresponding angles that are congruent, the transversal establishes the ability to make a parallel line. So I'm going to pick some random point along this arc, this line, and I'm going to make an arc of an unknown size, doesn't really matter, it can be anything, I choose it to be less than that so the lines don't overlap. That's an arc. Come back and reproduce that arc from this other piece. Now, I didn't have this going long enough, so I'm going to have to extend that because I need a point of intersection. I'm now going to come back and measure the mouth of this arc. In other words, find out exactly how far open this arc is. And I'm going to carry that up to the second arc, demonstrating that this is the same as this. This point of intersection and our original point we started from, together when connected, will produce a line that is parallel to the first line. Now I know that a trapezoid exists with one set of parallel lines. So if I choose my second side, I automatically produce a trapezoid. The question is whether I want to produce a, an isosceles trapezoid, a non-isosceles trapezoid. If I want to choose isosceles, I expect to find this length reproduced over here. So let's find that one first. I'm going to measure this length exactly, come back over to my endpoint, and draw where that length would be. Now notice it gives me two answers, one answer here and one answer here. If I were to connect there, that shape would be the isosceles trapezoid. If I were to connect over here instead, notice that that gives me two sets of parallel sides. In fact, what it ends up giving me is parallel lines, these opposite sides congruent. We could prove that, in fact, there is an alternative when that becomes parallelogram. Obviously, it's not a strict proof because there's two possible ways this could be accomplished. Um, if I want to produce a non-isosceles trapezoid, I can't choose the parallelogram because that falls outside the realm of trapezoids. So to produce a trapezoid, it can't be a parallelogram. It can't be isosceles. If I want it non-isosceles, I just pick some other point, any point other than those two, and connect my endpoints. I've now produced a trapezoid with these two sides of different lengths, thus a non-isosceles trapezoid.